a large batch of weapons discovered in formerly terrorist-controlled areas of eastern Aleppo in Syria came from the West. That's according to an investigation by war correspondent Robert Fisk. He tracked serial numbers on the missile casings and tried to find out how those weapons then ended up in the terrorists' hands. Caleb Maupin looks more closely at the results of the probe. This is a weapons factory located in Bosnia. Most likely you have never heard of it. But it's here that the weapons were manufactured for one of the bloodiest battles in Syria. Lots of homes were destroyed and lots of civilians were killed in western Aleppo by those questionable rebels. Rebel barrage began at almost exactly 8 o'clock in the morning, and it happened at the worst possible time, just as thousands of children were going to school. The first shell actually came in between these buildings. The children were on their way to school when a mortar shell landed nearby. A few of them were killed. I knew them. They went to my school. 13-year-old Reem lost her foot in rebel shelling three weeks ago. I never did the tragedy. The rebels launched the rocket at 10 o'clock in the morning. Seconds later, it hit the National School of Aleppo. Three of the children died on the spot. So the rebels are now pushing closer and closer. We're in the Al-Assad summer. And the rebels are pushing into Aleppo again. By sunset, nine dead, over a hundred civilians injured. Now, most of those rebels are tied to the Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Nusra terrorist group. But let's focus on those weapons that they used. Robert Fisk, an investigative reporter, was able to trace those weapons back to that very factory in Bosnia. He was able to get a hold of the factory's logbook and get in touch with the former weapons control director. The director recognized his signature in the logbook and from there was able to determine who the buyer was. It's a warranty for the 120 millimeter mortar launcher. This is NATO standard. It went to Saudi Arabia. It was part of a supply of 500 mortars. I remember the Saudi shipment well. The Saudis came to our factory to inspect the weapons at the beginning of 2016. The response from Saudi officials was pretty much a denial. They said that the investigation was vague and undefined. However, their response seemed pretty vague as well. Saudi Arabia is a leading voice within the international community in support of a diplomatic solution to the conflict in Syria, while at the same time working with our neighbors and allies to counter the growth of forces of extremism. But it's not just Saudi Arabia. The former weapons director says that NATO and the United States pretty much run the show at the weapons-making facility. When the Saudis came to our factory to inspect, at the beginning of 2016, there was a Saudi minister and some Saudi officers who also came to inspect the weapons before receiving them. The officers wore civilian clothes. The minister was in a robe. All our production after the Bosnian war is under the control of the Americans and NATO, who are always coming here. And they know each and every piece of weaponry that leaves our factory. We also asked NATO for a response, but they didn't have any details to share, even though the weapons were actually made to the NATO standards. NATO does not own, sell or transfer arms or ammunition. For any further questions, we would refer you to national authorities. Now, another trace from the basement of this former terrorist base in Aleppo is the markings on the casing of a missile. Now, if you take a look, the first number here, this represents the type of missile. The second number, however, is the stock number. You'll notice that it contains the figure 01. Now, that's the NATO code representing the United States. It turns out that this TOW anti-tank missile was manufactured at a facility in the United States by the Raytheon Systems Company. This missile would have been manufactured and sold by Hughes Raytheon absolutely legally to a NATO, pro-NATO or friendly, i.e. pro-American, power government, defence, ministry, you name it. And there will exist for it an end-user certificate, an EUC, 
a document of impeccable provenance which will be signed by the buyers, in this case by the chaps who purchased the Tau missiles in very large numbers, stating that they are the final recipients of the weapons. This is not the first time this has happened. Syria is actually littered with weapons that are made to NATO standards, and some of which have actually been manufactured in the United States. The question now is, how much do Washington and NATO know about their weapons falling into the hands of the very terrorists they claim to be fighting? There is a deafening silence, a, a purposeful lack of interest, a purposeful apathy. And the reason for this is simple. The U.S. government and the military-industrial complex and the corporate-owned media that functions as an echo chamber for the military-industrial complex actually does not care. The U.S. government prosecutes those who they say aid and abet terrorism. Well, guess what? American war contractors are aiding and abetting terrorism, but the U.S. judicial system, the Justice Department, the long arm of American law enforcement will not be used against these same military corporations, which in fact are subsidized, receive a form of welfare from American taxpayers every year.